This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the amazing all-in-one website platform that makes starting your brand an easy and unique experience. More on Squarespace later in the video. Previously on One Piece is Hilarious, the Straw Hats beat up God and take his gold, even though the people on Sky Island were about to just give them their gold as thanks. It's hilarious. They think they robbed them. It's funny. And they fly down from the Sky Islands on an octopus, which doesn't make sense either, but you know, that's what happened. And while they're coming down from the Sky Islands after this just remarkable adventure that absolutely no one would believe if they tried to tell them. While they're parachuting down from this octopus, Luffy decides, you know, that, that big head looks a little bouncy. I'm gonna get on up there. So he starts bouncing on the octopus's head. This octopus that is safely ferrying them down from the Sky Islands, which is to our knowledge the highest place in all of One Piece. They're using an octopus as a parachute from the highest place in the One Piece world and Luffy is using the parachute that they're using as a trampoline. No regard for his safety or anyone else's on the ship. He, he does not care. And of course, because because he's jumping on the octopus, he's slowly letting air out every time. Like, I don't understand the physics, I don't think anybody does, of, of why or how this octopus is able to ferry them down from the Sky Islands. But Luffy's messing it up, so when he's done jumping on him, the octopus is like, well, that's it, don't got any more air in me, guess I'm gonna have to drop you guys. So he drops the Mary! So everybody is just falling to their death, but luckily they don't die. Luckily they land safe and sound in the middle of a marine base! Which is just hilarious, like, the octopus was funny enough, but the fact that they landed just just right in the middle of another problem is just so funny. And things get just so much more funny, oh my god. But you guys already know this. This has by far been the most requested filler arc, and it's it's one of the funniest arcs in all of One Piece for sure. And it's crazy that it's filler. There's so many laughs that happen in this arc, and I am excited to get into all of them. But for starters, we need to take a look at our protagonist for this tale. Now, his name is gonna be Commander Jonathan. Like, I actually feel comfortable calling him the protagonist of this tale, because certainly, I mean, he wasn't doing anything. A bunch of lunatics just broke into his base. I'm just so happy to be taking a break from the sorry protagonists like Arlong, Horty Jones, and Caesar the Clown. None, none of that in this arc. None of that in this arc. We have tremendous respect for Commander Jonathan. He's also got a sidekick named Lieutenant Drake, who's way more no-nonsense, but, you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Commander Jonathan is the star of the show. So anyway, like I said, those lunatics have now broken into Commander Jonathan's naval base, Navarone. And so, of course, as soon as the ship is spotted, they surround it and they start moving in. But when everybody gets to the ship, they see that no one is on the ship at all. So Commander Jonathan starts interviewing the people that saw the Mary fall from the sky to see if they could get any answers out of them. And to his surprise, all of them start talking about it's a ghost ship. They start saying stuff about soft hands groping them everywhere and there's a monster that they saw with antlers and none of it makes sense, but you know it's not a damn ghost ship. So of course, Commander Jonathan decides to walk on the ship himself and imagine imagine being Commander Jonathan, okay? You go on the Mary and what do you find? You see some history books, you see some cooking supplies and then you go in one room and it's just filled with gold. More gold and treasure than you have ever seen. So if you were Commander Jonathan, you'd be looking at this like, what the hell? What did they rob God? What's going on? So you take note of the gold and you think to yourself like, yeah, we're, we're definitely confiscating that. There's no way we're leaving this on the ship. Then you look up and you see a South Bird. And so you start thinking about what are the sailor's tales you've heard about South Birds? You know, where do they come from? You know, where would this one may have come from? Before you can even really finish the thought though, the South Bird flies down and just starts whooping your ass for no reason. You start wondering like, God, are you part of the Straw Hats? Why are you fighting so hard? So after you get done fighting that dumbass bird, you walk off the mare and you start talking with some of your troops again. They're still spooked and they think it must be a ghost ship and you decide, you know what, they might as well just run with that narrative. Because you got a lot of information from searching the ship, but you still don't know where they are. There's no reason to cause like this huge panic inside of your base, you know, by saying like, oh, everybody, don't worry, it's not a ghost ship, it's just a bunch of crackheads that broke into the base and I have no idea where they are. Like, Commander Jonathan's not an idiot, he's not gonna tell them that. So the commander goes back to his quarters and that's when he goes over all of the information that he learned on the ship to try to figure out where they might be. And in his quarters, you go over all of the information that you learned while you were on that ship. You correctly deduce that there must be seven of these lunatics just running around, and one of them must be a doctor, one of them must be a cook. Now, of those seven, you only know what two of them look like, because they're the only two with bounty posters right now, and that's gonna be Luffy and Zoro. So you know what those two idiots look like. For the others, you know one of them is a doctor, and you know that one of them is a cook, for sure. So all of that information gives you a little bit of help as to figuring out where they might be trying to hide right now. But you ponder on everything that you've learned that night, and you decide it's probably better to get an early start tomorrow to start looking for these lunatics. Speaking Speaking of these lunatics, what is everybody doing right now? Let's go to the Straw Hats perspective. What's going on? Well, the Straw Hats are all involved in their own shenanigans, of course, as always. They're all trying to figure out how to escape or hide everybody besides Luffy. He's not even hiding. He doesn't care. He's just trying to figure out where the food is. He's dead ass just goofing around on his way to the kitchen, messing around and posing for the cameras along the way. And not like posing for the cameras is crazy. He does not care. So luckily Sanji sees that and he's like, okay, no, he's, he's going to get us in trouble. I'd better follow him. So the next
next day, the hunt begins. Commander Jonathan tells his men to start looking in specific places for all of the straw hats. Meanwhile, Sanji's managed to catch up with Luffy, and they're both trying to figure out where they're going to hide. So Sanji and Luffy keep running around the base until Sanji finds two cook uniforms. He gives one to Luffy, and they both try to infiltrate the kitchen inside Navarone. Which, in hindsight, is not... I don't know why Sanji thought that would be a good idea. I know he knows that it would be best for him to infiltrate the kitchen, but I have no idea why he would bring his crackhead friend with him. I don't know what a crackhead would be like in the kitchen, um, but I can't imagine that he would be discreet. And then, like, immediately, Luffy starts ruining everything. Luckily, though, Sanji's such a smooth guy and such a good cook, he's able to compensate for both of them. So now Luffy and Sanji have infiltrated the kitchen, and for now, it looks like they're safe. But let's go back to Commander Jonathan's perspective, okay? He's just sailing in his boat, looking for these lunatics, and this, out of nowhere, in the corner of his eye, Commander Jonathan looks up, and he sees none other than Zoro comically reaching for his swords as he's about to fall off a cliff. Jonathan looks up, and he's just like, I... No, that's not who I think it is. Like, he's not even hiding. He's just full on trying to get his hands on his swords just in broad daylight. The swords fall and then he jumps after him and goes in the water. And of course, as soon as Zoro pops his head up, Commander Jonathan's like, gotcha. They've got him surrounded. And Commander Jonathan's thinking to himself like, okay, wow. Well, that was way easier than I thought it would be. That's one down, six to go. So the Marines capture Zoro and he is imprisoned immediately. And they also start interrogating him immediately because any information that he gives them can help them catch the other lunatics. All right, Mr. Greenhair, I want to know exactly why you guys are here and i want to know right now well let's see first we rode our ship into the sky we fought god for about 11 minutes and then our captain showed up and just whooped his ass for like a full 20 minutes and then after that we stole all of god's gold and then rode an octopus down but then our captain started using it as a trampoline and then the octopus deflated and then well then we ended up here so you just you just not gonna tell the truth, huh? So they don't believe him, and honestly, they shouldn't. It sounds ridiculous, but that's where Zoro is right now. He's managed to become the first person in prison. Uh, but what are the other Straw Hats doing? Well, Luffy and Sanji are still safe, pretending to be cooks inside of the kitchen, so let's check up on some of the other Straw Hats. Let's take a look at Nami and Chopper. And Nami right now is disguising herself as Scruffy from Futurama. And Chopper is running for his life across the entire base. It's hilarious. The Marines chase Chopper all across the base until eventually they corner him, and they're inside of, like, this storage room, right? And so they see, coming out of one of the boxes, is it looks like a pair of antlers. And so they're like, is is that him? It's a pair of antlers sticking out from a box. Of course it's him. So they approach the box where they think Chopper's hiding and they remove the lid and they see that it's actually just a box full of antlers. Why do we have a box full of antlers? I don't know, maybe it could be described by a throwaway line. You know, like maybe the antlers were to be used in medicine or something. Well, then it should say that on the box. Don't just put a bunch of antlers in an unmarked case for people to find like that. So Chopper gets away and soon after he reunites with Nami, who's found a new disguise as a nurse, which gives Chopper the idea of pretending to be a doctor with her. And he introduces himself to everyone is Dr. Chopper, which isn't a lie, but it's also not a disguise. He really should have tried harder on the name there. Something else that's hilarious, Chopper gets way too into his disguise. Like, he starts talking about how it's his duty to protect everybody, like, as a doctor. Like, it doesn't matter what the first priority of the mission is. He needs to save lives and as many as possible, which, you know, it, it's true. It's who he is, but it's just, you picked a really, really funny time to get really into the role, dude. And can we all just stop and appreciate how hilarious it is that there is a reindeer pretending to be a human doctor performing open-heart surgery on people? Like, imagine if right before they put you under for your surgery, Dr. Chopper walks in and he's just like, hey, how you do it? I'm Dr. Chopper. I'm here to put a new heart in your chest. I would be laying on that table like that. What? No. No, who is that? Uh Ah, yeah, <laughs> that's it. You're just out. Like, that's the last thing you see is Chopper's fake mustache staring down at you. Or what if they met before they put him under? Like, hello, fellow human. It is I, Dr. Chopper. Like, I wouldn't, no matter what he says, I think I'd be laying on the table like, all right, Zoidberg, can I get maybe just another doctor? But just off first glance, I'd be like, why are you wearing that hat? That mustache is a fake mustache. This isn't a real doctor. He's somebody in disguise. Please, somebody realize this. Like, there's so much that I would just understand immediately immediately once I look at Chopper. But guys, before we continue, we need to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace, a platform that helps you refine your brand in a number of ways. Like let's say you need to create a website. Well, Squarespace has you covered. Because if you use Squarespace, then you can get started with Fluid Engine, Squarespace's very own drag and drop website editor, which really simplifies the website creation aspect while still managing to make sure that the website you're creating is still wholly yours, completely unique. And even without Fluid Engine, the website templates that Squarespace offers are remarkably flexible, allowing you to choose between a ton of different categories to customize your website 
exactly the way you need it to be. You can even use Squarespace as your very own blog if you want to, sharing any photos, videos, and updates from your business whenever you want. So if you happen to be creating a new brand or managing an existing one and you think Squarespace would be a good fit for you, please head over to squarespace.com and get started with a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to this link that's on the screen right now to receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A very special thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and an equally special thank you to you for watching this video. And with that, we are back to the show. So that's where Nami and Chopper are going to stay for a while on this adventure. Chopper's just going to be saving lives and he's just way too into it. So let's go back to Sanji and Luffy in the kitchen. So Sanji is stressed because he met the head chef inside the kitchen, which is Jessica Chuan. And of course, she's a woman and very beautiful. So Sanji's like, listen, I got to do the best job I possibly can to impress her. And he's impressing the entire kitchen. The only downside is, again, he has his crackhead friend with him. So for everything that Sanji does that impresses everybody, Luffy does something that shocks and appalls everybody. All right, so I just need to finish cooking this. And then after that, I can make sure to start prepping that over there. And then afterward, we need to make sure that the smoothie machine is good. Luffy, what are you doing? Making chicken tenders? We don't serve chicken tenders, Luffy. Then what did I put in the oven? I don't know. Get away from the oven. Stop cooking, Luffy. You're only going to make things worse. All right, well, at least let me wait until my pizza rolls are finished, too. Pizza roll... Luffy... Did you stick your bare hands into the pasta I made earlier? Roll a bunch of it into balls and then put them into the oven? Well, yeah, like I said, pizza rolls. How many times do I have to tell you that those aren't pizza rolls? Pasta balls, then whatever. Look, they're just as Italian as regular pizza rolls. So if people eat those, they should have no problem trying what I'm making. Pizza rolls are not an Italian cuisine, Luffy. And I'm sorry, what do you think cooking is? Do you think it's just putting together a bunch of nonsense that you find in the kitchen and hoping for the best? Shut up, don't get mad at me because you're confined to the rigid culinary rule set that Chef Zeph impressed upon you at a young age. I weep for your lost creativity, but I am an artist in bloom. Anyone can cook, but only the fearless create. Did you watch Ratatouille again last night? That little rat is funny. And so that's when Jessica walks in and thanks them for their hard work. She's like, hey, hey, how's my favorite cooks doing? Oh my God, Jessica Chuan. Don't mention it, okay? You know, we're here to do whatever you say. Yeah, I do make a pretty good pasta ball, but I don't want to toot my own horn. You shut up. And so Jessica's like, well, I'm glad to hear that. And since everybody's doing such a good job, I hope you won't mind that I'm giving you a little bit more on your plate. I need you to cut all 300 of these onions so that we can be prepared for our next dish. 300? Oh, of course, Jessica Twone. We will have those done for you in no time, I promise. Wait a minute, so I'm the idiot for creating a new way to eat Italian food, but you can simp us into cutting 300 onions while we're right in the middle of an escape mission? This double standard is crazy! So Sanji finishes showing the cooks inside the kitchen how to finish making his dish, and that's when Luffy's pizza rolls, pasta balls, finally come out of the oven too. And that's when Jessica comes in and asks if someone can take the food to table 8. And Luffy volunteers immediately, but it's painfully clear that he's just gonna eat it on his way there. So Jessica makes him promise that he won't eat any before he gets there. So Luffy's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then he runs out of the kitchen and Sanji just standing there like he's he's definitely going to eat that food. That's when one of the Marines that Sanji is talking to says that Luffy better not eat that food because that food is going straight to Jessica Twan's husband. And so Sanji's like, you mean I just cut 300 onions and she got a man? But it's worse than that because Jessica Twan's husband is none other than Commander Jonathan, the person in charge of this entire base and the person looking for all the straw hats. So just imagine being Commander Jonathan. All right, you have been looking for these idiots all day. You caught one of them like immediately. It was easier than you thought and so you decide to take a lunch break and on your lunch break the crackhead that you have been looking for he walks in and one of the kitchen uniforms and he places the food down next to you you look up at him and then back down at the pasta balls and then back up at monkey d luffy and you're like so we're just this is how we're doing are, are none of you gonna try i kind of thought this would be harder to be honest uh, listen i'm just gonna eat this food and then after that we can talk a little what the hell what are you eating the food that's on my plate right in front of me? Nope. I can see you eating. Okay. I can see this happening. How fast do you think that you're moving? You know what? I'm tired of this. So the commander catches Luffy in the act of stealing his food, and it's revealed that he does have a devil fruit power. And if, I mean, he knew it was Luffy. Like, it's not much of a reveal at all. Like, the commander just like, seriously, you guys are really, really dumb. But Sanji knew that Luffy would get caught, so he left the kitchen and followed after him, and now Sanji's eavesdropping. And so now he sees that Luffy and the commander are all having a talk, and the commander lets out that Zoro's been captured already. Luffy and Sanji hears that, and Sanji's like, all right, we, we're just wasting way too much time. We need to get out of here. So Sanji pulls Luffy out of there, and that's when they realize that they are surrounded. And right before they all get captured, luckily, the lunch period ends, and all of the Marines that were previously eating lunch and all of the Marines that are about to eat lunch, they all just start flooding into the area, giving Sanji and Luffy enough of a distraction to make their escape. So Sanji and Luffy are still, miraculously and somehow, safe, even though Commander Jonathan has now put eyes on both of them. And so Sanji and Luffy are gone, and then immediately after, 
after that, Usopp gets arrested pretending to be a Marine on the base. And he gets sent straight to Commander Jonathan's quarters. And that's when Commander Jonathan is told that he's pretending to be Commander Shepard. And now just imagine how Jonathan feels when just moments later, Robin comes in, also pretending to be Commander Shepard. She walks in like, what's up? I'm Fem Shep. How's everybody doing? So you are watching these two idiots, both of them pretending to be Commander Shepard. And you know what Commander Shepard looks like, okay? You've played Mass Effect. But again, you don't want to cause a scene before you know where all of these lunatics are. So you start thinking like, all right, one of you definitely should be put in prison. But again, you don't want to make a scene until you know where the rest of these lunatics are and how you're going to arrest them. So you're like, all right, one of you is clearly an imposter, you know, so at least one person has to go to jail. You start panicking because you're like, all right, well, they're clearly on the same side. Obviously, she's going to take up for him. But then that's when Fem Shep is like, oh, nope, never seen this guy a day in my life. He is clearly a part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take him away. And so you're just like, I okay sure yeah t t take him to the brig so that's it for Usopp he is taken to the jail with Zoro so now you have officially caught two of these idiots you let Robin walk around for now you're still gonna send a couple people to Taylor you know figure out what she's really up to but you're not in any rush she at least doesn't look nearly as stupid and unhinged as the others that you've encountered so you trust her to at least lay low for a while but not too long after that Commander Jonathan gets word from the prison they call up Commander Jonathan and they're like oh my god sir thank god you picked up we actually caught another one of those idiots weird looking guy by the name of Condoriano. He's clearly a part of the Straw Hats crew. We locked him in here and they started talking about how, you know, they're, they're gonna plan to escape. Anyway, I, I locked him up real quick. Don't you worry about it, sir. And Commander John has listed to all this like, Condoriano, that... That sounds like a fake name. He immediately puts it together like that's probably the real Major Shepard and the other two are just pretending to be Commander Shepard on my ship. But, you know, again, you can't raise too many alarms. So you're just like, I let it slide let it slide poor old condoriano got caught that's too bad that is too bad so you let it slide but then five minutes later someone is calling from the prison again oh my god sir it's terrible okay it's a slow down private what's going on it's the straw hats we had a trap waiting for him here in the prison but then a couple of them ran down in here pulled out a seashell it farted then an explosion happened and the whole jail blew up you what? Anyway, they're on the run now, sir. Be careful. They're crazy. So now the base is pretty much on high alert. It's not what you wanted to happen, but you're like, this is fine. Just put a bunch of Marines on the bridge and try to capture them right there. Meanwhile, Chopper and Ami are still pretending to be a doctor and a nurse, but at this point, like they've abandoned all pretense of their disguise. Like Dr. Chopper has literally just changed so many lives. They've become fully invested in Dr. Chopper's story, and now they want to help him escape the Marine base. Like their entire relationship with Dr. Chopper has been nothing but lies, but damn it, he's so so charming and so perfect and he saved my marriage i gotta get him off this army base i can't let dr chopper be arrested he put a new heart in my chest and then taught me how to love so chopper and nami are pretty much on easy mode while people help them escape and meanwhile luffy usopp zoro and sanju are all fighting to the death on the bridge but they all manage to make it past those marines and eventually make it to where the mary is docked but that's when a huge marine ambush appears they hit the straw hats with some flashbangs and then they all just start fighting harder like true crackheads cornered until finally they trap luffy in a sea prism stone net to continue all of his crackhead energy. And this is when Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Usopp are reunited with Nurse Nami and Dr. Chopper. They've also got another nurse with them who is, again, very invested in the escape of Dr. Chopper. So she decides to help them escape, and her and Nami cook up this hostage situation plan. Basically, since the two of them are in Marine nurse uniforms, they're going to pretend to be hostages, and uh, Dr. Chopper is going to assume another identity as just a big and bad pirate that basically is threatening everybody's lives if they don't let everyone get on the ship. Which is just hilarious to see. Chopper's just like, yeah, I'm here and I'm mad. We're getting off this island right now or I'm gonna kill everybody. And so Chopper's laying it on thick. The whole crew is playing into it to make sure that their escape is, you know, looks legitimate. And Luffy is just sitting in the sea prison stone net like, just like, Chopper, that's so cowardly. God, I misjudged you. And I was just like, I'm so sorry. That to me is probably the funniest part of the entire arc. Like they're all invested in this plan so that they can finally leave this Marine base. And Luffy is just sitting there watching Chopper of all people deliver his, what he thinks is an evil monologue. And Luffy's just like, Chopper, that's weak. It's not what we do here. Oh, I thought you were different. I was like, dude, he's so stupid. He's so stupid. But the Marines pull their men back just in case. You know, Chopper apparently managed to convince them enough for them to pull back. And so everybody starts making their way onto the Mary. This is when one of the Marines comes out and takes the other nurse that was pretending to be one of Chopper's hostages. They try to take Nami too, but she punches him right in the face. And in this confusion, the Marines just decide, fuck it, I don't, just, everybody just shoot at him. I don't know, we got one of the hostages, that's good enough. So in a panic, and Luffy's still fatigued from the Sea Prism Stone Net, he gets all of his crew members onto the ship just in the most chaotic and crazy way possible. He almost kills them so, so often. It's one of the reasons why, like, I know some people are mad at the whole anger 
angry Nami gag where she, you know, is one of the only people that could just beat Luffy up. Listen, if one of your friends almost killed you as many times as Luffy almost kills all of his friends, I think it's fine. I don't think it's girl bossing if he's literally like trying to kill us whenever he gets the chance. But everyone manages to get on the ship and this is when they decide not to go too crazy with the gunfire because technically one hostage is still on the ship. Uh, that is until they look through the binoculars and sees that the hostage that they thought was a hostage is just Nami. She's bossing everybody around in the ship and they're like, son of a bitch. She works there. So now everybody is finally on the Mary and they manage to escape. Now, everybody except for one crew member, and as you might have wondered by this point in time, what is Robin doing right now? Well, I will tell you, dear viewer, she's just been walking around reading and breaking people's necks wherever she goes. Like, I know that when Robin does clutch, she's not really killing people, but I don't know, you can't convince me that that's true, man. Like, I mean, it looks so painful. She'd be breaking people's backs, their necks. I swear she doesn't care. But no kidding, she's just been reading books and committing wanton acts of murder wherever she goes. Her cover's finally blown when the rest of the crew escape, though, and that's when she just decides, well, guess it's time for me to go too, and she just leaves. Not bothered at all. Everybody else went through so much to get to where they're at, and Robin's just like, well, guess my time here has come to an end. And she just takes off and makes it to the Mary. She's just so funny, but that's when all of the Straw Hats are reunited and they are seconds away from leaving, like literally seconds away from leaving the harbor and just sailing off into the sunset. Uh, that's when Nami decides though to check something and she checks and uh, the, her worst fears are confirmed when she checks. All of the gold that they got from Sky Island, all of that legendary and rare loot that Enel dropped after they beat his ass, all of it is gone. It's just an empty room where the gold used to be. And so Nami realizes this and she's like, oh hell no, turn this ship around. We're going back for that shit. They were literally seconds away from leaving and they did like Nami makes the decision, fuck, turn it around. We got to get that gold. And Commander Jonathan has been watching through his binoculars this whole time and he sees them turn around and he's like, shit. Damn it. Because at this point, I think it's time that I explain Commander Jonathan's true intentions that I don't think anyone's ever really realized until this point. You see, when the Straw Hats first got here and it was declared a ghost ship and the commander was like, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, it was a ghost ship. And it seemed like he wasn't really going after them to like try to actually capture them more like he was okay if they escaped. That's because if the Straw Hats escape and he doesn't have to report this to anybody, then it could just be a spooky thing that happened. A ghost ship showed up. You know, I don't know. A bunch of, you know, people said they saw a bunch of hands and a crackhead running around. I don't know. It hasn't been verified. And if he doesn't have to report it, that means he doesn't have to submit all of this gold to the Marine headquarters. All of this can basically just never happen and everybody on the base can be richer. Or at the very least, him and Jessica can be a lot richer. Like, Commander Jonathan is a good guy. A really good guy. He does enjoy chess. He, he loves a good challenge. But more than anything, he loves that sweet, sweet gold, baby. He was, he was seconds away from just making sure that he had it, but they realized a little too early that he still had their gold. So they turned around and he's like, damn it. And the Marines are on the transponder shell like oh they're turning around so we need to get him and he's like i mean that's you know maybe i uh, don't try too hard is all is what i'm trying to say so the straw hats pull into a dock and they manage to make like a makeshift disguise for the mary they disguise it as a marine ship and think that hopefully this is going to help them in their escape meanwhile lieutenant drake comes into commander jonathan's office and the whole time lieutenant drake's actually been trying to catch them like he's like listen we can't let these crackheads run around that's when the real major shepherd walks in angry for being in prison with the straw hats because of the whole misunderstanding earlier commander jonathan sees him he's like what's up condor Doriano, stupid ass. Gondoriano just comes down on him. He's just like, all right, listen, you let these lunatics just run free. I've been in prison. Look, I am your superior. I do not like how I've been treated here today. And if you let these lunatics escape, that is going to be on your head, Commander. And so Commander Jonathan hears that and he's like, damn it, okay? Because he now he has to come up with the convincing strategy to catch the Straw Hats and make sure that he keeps their gold and still let them escape so that he can keep their gold. And those idiots are closing in fast on where they think the gold is being kept. So Luffy, Zoro, Usopp, and Robin all run to the vault and this is when commander jonathan has an ambush waiting for them and of course when usopp finally manages to get the vault door open it's revealed that this was all a setup and a trap because the real gold is right there in your office and to be honest this is as far as commander jonathan thought this fake ambush through he didn't really know how this was gonna go but miraculously in the middle of commander jonathan's fake ambush condoriano shows up and tries to get revenge on the straw hats and he's mad he pulls up and then he pulls out a bazooka which is just a comically large and unnecessary weapon to bring to a gunfight and when condoriano uses this bazooka it backfires. I mean, and literally, like it literally fires behind him and he ends up opening the door for the Straw Hats to escape. So now everybody's laughing at him and he tries to shoot it at him again to get his revenge and then he just starts, he blows everybody up with that one. So it's just, it's hilarious. Commander Jonathan's watching all this like, I, I'll take it. 
Whatever, cool. A win is a win. So the Straw Hats escape, and then they run back into Dr. Chopper's admirers. They tell the nurse that helped them escape earlier that the gold wasn't in the vault they thought it would be, and so they give them more clues about where they think it could be located. And so again, they are literally helping to facilitate the release of these criminals into the world, all because Dr. Chopper is such a stand-up guy. Like, I am convinced Dr. Chopper is the Jackie Daytona of this universe. You know, the guy Laszlo pretends to be in What We Do in the Shadows. Like, I'm convinced Dr. Chopper is just Jackie Daytona. In New York City. So back at Jonathan's quarters, all of that's happened, and now he's just waiting for word that the Straw Hats escaped to confirm his victory, when suddenly, the crackhead he met earlier busts through his window riding a motorcycle boat. Like, why do you have that, and how did you get here? Do you call security, and the crackhead starts getting ready to fight everybody in the room? So you have one of your men fire a sea prism stone net at him again, and this zaps all of the crackhead's strength from his body. That's when Nami's like, hey, where's the gold? And the commander's like, I, gold? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, what? Is that it right there? No. So Nami makes eye contact with the gold and the commander denies it and she's just frustrated. So she just zaps everybody in the room with lightning. Then she grabs the gold and the crackhead and they both take off in the motorcycle boat back out through the window. As they disappear into the night, Condoriano pulls up again and he's like, look at that. That is a disgrace. You know what? And so now Commander Jonathan's backs up against the wall. It looks like he's going to have to say goodbye to all of that sweet, sweet gold. But he knows he doesn't have to panic because if they keep going the way that they're going, they're going to run into a reef not too long after. And the Straw Hats do keep going in that direction until they finally hit a reef and they are marooned on dry land. And Jonathan comes out and he's like, listen, this is checkmate. Uh, you guys fought valiantly. You know, I was really rooting for you to escape, if that means anything. I really was. So everybody puts a spotlight on the Mary and Commander Jonathan is watching through his binoculars as Jessica comes in to talk to him. And Jessica's just like, wow, okay, looks like that's checkmate. Looks like there's nothing else for you to do. Why don't you just sit down and come eat? And Jonathan's like, yeah, it looks like we've got him surrounded and there's no way out, but they, they could still do something unpredictable. And Jessica's like, okay, so like what? You know, we've got every exit sealed off. Like, what? What else could they possibly do? And Jonathan's like, you're right. They really don't have anywhere else to go. Unless they weren't just crackheads. They were magical flying crackheads. Now, you know, I'm thinking too much about it. We got them surrounded. Everything's going to be fine. So Commander Jonathan is watching them through the binoculars while they're marooned on dry land. And he's trying to see what their strategy is going to be to get out of there. He knows that it looks like it should be taken care of. Keep eyes on the straw hats, men. Tell me anything you see that's abnormal. All right, so we got eyes on him. It looks like he's, uh, what... What the hell? Commander Jonathan and the Marines watch as Luffy pulls an octopus out of his pants. Then they strap that octopus to the top of the Mary. And then seconds after they strap the octopus to the Mary, they take off into the night. And Commander Jonathan's like, what? And so as they take off in flight, Commander Jonathan's like, all right, you know what? We got to catch them. And I need that sweet, sweet gold. So fire a warning shot first. And then after that, try to take that balloon out or octopus, whatever that thing is, just shoot at it. And again, Commander Jonathan, he's a good guy. He definitely doesn't want anybody injured or hurt. And to be honest, like the gold itself, it's not really like, I mean, he wants to make him and Jessica's life a little bit better. And honestly, that's not like, that's not unreasonable. I mean, I don't know how much vice admirals get paid, but they can't pay them enough to deal with crackheads like this. I, that's just what I know for sure. But he's willing to let the gold go especially if lives are on the line but i mean while you know condoriano has pressured him so much he feels like he has to try his absolute hardest i mean he is a marine but while commander jonathan is contemplating the morality of his decision to shoot down the ship condoriano shows up again with his bazooka tries to shoot the straw hats out of the sky himself misses and then takes out the cannons that were going to shoot down the straw hats condoriano started this arc a marine major who adamantly denied any connection with the straw hats only for the arc to end with him being the sole reason that they escaped. Say what you want. That's character development, all right? I love to see it. So the Marines on Navarone watch the Straw Hats sail off into the sunrise as they wave goodbye to them. We love you, Dr. Chopper! New York City! Oh my God, they were magic. Jessica Twown! And as Commander Jonathan watches these idiots ride off into the sunrise, he thinks about how they've actually managed to bring all of the crew members on Navarone together. Whether it's Dr. Chopper saving people's lives and their marriages, or whether it's Sanji in the kitchen showing all the chefs the importance of camaraderie and how they should make sure that they're never wasting any food. Wherever they went on this base, they undeniably brought people together. And this fact is not lost on Commander Jonathan, so he thanks them as he watches them sail off into the sunrise. He also, more than likely, pocketed some gold. That's That part's not explicit in the arc, but I just, like, you don't have that much gold and not put a necklace or something inside your pocket. You know what I'm saying? There's absolutely no way he didn't take. He's like, I, I would have saw all that gold and I'd be like, I'm leaving with something. 
I'm leaving with something. But that's G8. One of the things I want to say before we get off, it's actually really sweet how they connect the Mary into this filler arc. I mean, it's kind of crazy, and it sets us up for not only the events, of course, in Long Ring, Long Land, but most importantly, the events of Water 7. This arc is really special. They also had some really heartfelt moments when they're talking about the Mary. Like, for instance, the reason that Nami decides to turn back and go back into the ship to get the gold isn't just because she's greedy. It's because she wanted to use some of that gold to fix the Mary. It's just, you know, we all love the Mary. That doesn't need, I don't need to explain why, you know, it just, it, watching this made me so emotional thinking about what's to come. Um, So I'm very excited to go into the next arc, which is Long Ring, Long Land, but I'm really excited to do that. I love early One Piece, and I hope these videos encourage you to go back and give them a rewatch. This one is an easy rewatch, okay? If you're not doing anything, it's only like 10 episodes, give it a watch. It's, it's gonna be a fun time, I promise. But that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching, thank you for being interested, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.